kind of a cool morning this morning. Uh, the bees aren't really flying today. They're just, uh, there's a few bringing in pollen from somewhere. I'm not sure where they're getting it from, but uh, we're just out feeding. We're pulling pails and um, Carrie's gonna tip back a few highs. I just wanna see what the, the nests look like in this yard. We've got the smoke going today. Nice looking cluster. So we um, we farm uh, roughly 3,000 acres. Yeah, let's keep dipping it back. And we manage a cattle herd of of uh, 500 uh, cows, cattle, 500 cows. Um, manage an apiary, 1,500 hives. Uh, so so we're pretty busy. We. Uh, I have a philosophy of controlling everything we can, like a disease. Uh, we we uh, pay a lot of attention on animal nutrition. Um, and by doing that, we, uh, we find that we can produce some real healthy, productive stock. <clears throat> so our farm, we use pretty much every uh, chemical in the book, all these neonics everybody's after, we use them all. Um, so our bees are exposed to it, this is the same as anybody else. Um, I'm not going to rant too much about it, but I find that if we as beekeepers control disease, uh, especially the varroa mite, and if we help our hives out by uh, giving them what they need, like in terms of nutrition. We gotta start feeding these bees if we want them to perform, All right? So a healthy animal is, uh, is uh, gonna give us lots of performance and they're gonna be able to combat disease a lot better. So these hives are, are looking all right. I'm just gonna run, tip a few more eyes so I run out of, out of uh, memory here. So these winter clusters have, uh, have been started back in August and that's when Carrie and I put a lot of time into uh, feeding them. Just the way things are set up now, farmers are doing such a good job keeping their fields clean. You can't blame them for that, but they have a the technology available now <clears throat> that these fields are pretty much weedless. And we're losing our ditches from spraying, we're losing tree rows and sloughs and everything. So we're putting into we're put into a tight spot. <clears throat> we can't depend on uh, nature providing the nutrition these bees need. And that's unfortunate, I don't like that, but that's a fact. So what do we do? We put a lot of time into supplementing these hives um, after the main, maybe just pull that pail off, see what's under them. Yeah. After the main canola flow and alfalfa, mm -hmm. we uh, gave them a shot of um, a protein supplement. Actually, I, I found a new product, product which I really enjoyed using because this easy to use and I gave him a bit of that not to uh, that's, that's nice it's not so much providing their whole diet but supplementing their diet so if they're lacking something in their in their needs <clears throat> they could get it from the supplement I put on <clears throat> and the bees seem to respond to it very favorably Spent a little bit of money on that, but then, then I'm ending up with hives going into winter look like this, which is fantastic. I would call that a, a Canadian metric six framer. So I'm just about
about out of memory here, so I'm just gonna tip back a couple more hives. These guys are quite heavy. So this yard, it's right beside our field. It's a canola field, treated with every type of chemical you can buy. These hives aren't dying. This particular yard, we could not wash a mite out of mites in this yard. And that is half the battle right there. Okay, so that's